thank you very much for agreeing to this conversation because uh, I think maybe it's the last thing that actually can be done at this time to talk and to try to uh, exchange ideas even dis in, in disagreeing I, I, I think uh, it's very valuable and uh, when we are all separated by by this strange situation uh, the conversation seems to be the only way of going forward communication now at least yeah we speak each other and somehow uh, i don't know i think each composer when studying he should study about the situation in society about the the, the mechanism of reception yeah because uh, Alexander, to be serious, we are entertainers. We are bad entertainers. <laughs> yes, well, well, not, well uh, worse. Even, uh, even in Germany now, in Schwiger, we have this uh, very nice composer, uh, 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 conductor, um, Theodor Corentis. He's very good and he makes wonderful performances. But he is an entertainer, mm. and and the and the audience goes there to be, uh, under, uh, yes, to, to have a nice evening together. And after they go drinking and, and eating and so on, and and they listen to the music of Gustav Mahler, and it is like to go on a lunar park. <laughs> they have they have a, a sort of terrible things, and at the end it ends in in, in defect major or whatever. So, um, so you are I, famous. I even, even Johann Sebastian Bach he also was an entertainer. <laughs> so you you are famous for uh, crit you you are famous for criticizing the the easiness of art the 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 joy <laughs> or, or criticizing or terrible. Yes. Yeah, so, well, do you think this situation, in your opinion, in your view, this whole strange uh, shift, do you think there is a chance uh, for a positive change in, in things, or, or do you think we are all doomed and going into... No, uh, look, well, who am I? I, I, I am not uh, John the Baptist, or, or I'm not Billy Graham. I, I can only say my, my, what I say, uh, but... Even when listening to the music of Bach, people in the morning of um, they hear a Brandenburgish concert, so and, and having breakfast in the same time, so they feel a little bit Protestant, Christian, and they feel fine. So it's a, it's a nice ideal. But I think they feel there is a power there. And even if you, uh, there is a music which is totally famous and everybody knows by heart the Kleine Nachtmusik. And you can hear it as, as, a, as a telephone signal. But yeah. if they're out sitting there and hearing it, well, they, they might be well entertainment, but they feel there is a little bit more or there's a lot more at this. So uh, my unconscious they feel there is a um, an energy, and this is the only way to, uh, to live for. So, what would be we have this ear of Beethoven? What would be your ideal uh, model of a of a listener? What what should he or she feel when listening to when when yeah. when going to to the concert, which is not Luna Park, which is like the real experience? What what do you think is the characteristics? Well, uh, Alexander, it's not my job to control the feelings. And uh, each of us, uh, the first word uh, in, the, in the opera from uh, Alban Berg, Wozzeck, there's a moment when, when Wozzeck says to the doctor, doctor says, well, you have been pissed uh, like a dog. And he says, oh, Mr. Don't know, the doctor, sometimes we have a sort of structure. And this is very, the first, first moment when in, in, the, in the whole uh, literature of poesy, 
I heard this, I, I found this work uh, structure. And each of us, because you have your structure because of the influence of your childhood and of your nation and of your sex and of your, of also things which are giving influence to you. And so um, the only thing is that you should know this. And so when, when I make, you, when, if you make a music with, with, a, with a special sort of structure, the structure of the music uh, comes together with the structure of a listener. Hmm. And then something is, is, uh, is familiar, so it's sympathetic, they want to have the familiar thing, something is irritating. And so it's a problem how you shall come to terms with the irritation. Are you shut your jealousy and say, no, that, <laughs> or are you open your ears? So um, I think a, a music should just very kindly invite to open the ear. That's all. Mm. Uh, we have in German the difference from uh, hören and zu hören. Zu hören, in the moment now you are very uh, polite, you are zu hören. You, you, listen, you listen what I'm saying. But you, do, but you, are, don't, you are not, uh, you, don't, uh, you are not interested in my voice. If I speak like this, or oh, like this, that you begin to hear. Mm. You have to open another antenna. And it's a little bit the situation of, of music. Um, you have not just because the, the people go in the concert, I, me too, uh, in concert with, with Schubert, and they love Schubert, the unaccomplished or the winterreise, and they are so happy with this because they know it, it's all familiar. They bring Schubert and, 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 and make an embracing Schubert. So, but. Um, this is a sort of, of zuhören. Which, if we have the same language, we can zuhören. But if I hear uh, some Chinese people talking, I cannot zuhören. I only can hear the noise of the voice. <laughs> it's another way of reception. And in the, in, in the, also in, in, in the pictures and so, so is this maybe meeting or conflict or irritation with your structure? Or the structure of a society which is totally manipulated today mm. by commercial interest and by, I don't know, by political interest, by might, all the things. And some people, uh, they, they are totally uh, happy to be manipulated. No. When, when I go look at uh, Donald Trump and he's speaking, the rallies of Donald Trump. <coughs> He can say whatever he wants. A people is crying or shouting, totally enthusiastic. And I was uh, 1943. I think your parents were not still existing. Eh? No. <laughs> I was seven years old. And I heard uh, our minister, Goebbels, a propaganda minister. Yeah. And this was after Stalingrad. Because Stalingrad was a big catastrophe. And he showed it. Was he then total and Greek? Do you want the total world? Yeah. So you think so it's the same? They are totally manipulated and they were they were, they were made stupid. And this is a problem for me of democracy. <laughs> I think we, democracy is indispensable. Uh, this is the only way to, but democracy has two big problems and they are not discussed. The first problem is the demagogy. And this is what Mr. Trump is doing. No. And this is what Mr. Goebbels was doing. And the other is what I don't know English, to, to make stupid people, stupid, stupefaction or something like this. <laughs> To make people stupid, and people likes to to become stupid. It's a wonderful. But when when I saw Mr. Goebbels, all those audience were old Nazi. They were really chosen. But when I see Mr. Trump, 
there were the grandmama, the, and the opa, and the children, and all the ladies, and they were all shouting, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, but don't you think it's the result of being uh, disillusioned uh, with the uh, fake uh, promise of... Oh, terrible, of, yeah, sure. And now but, today, well, the demagogy was also, in, because uh, Weimar, when the Nazi came on, on the power, it was the same thing. But in that time, the technology was not so developed now, it's now. Yes, but I mean that the liberal, uh, the, the, the liberal promise and the, the myth yeah. of, of, is kind of, uh, uh, people are, are um, they don't believe it anymore. They, they think it's uh, not true and that they are being fooled by the liberal politics. So now they are searching somewhere else and they fall under the spell of, of demagogues like Trump. But oh. What, what's the what's the solution here and how, how to it's, it's a bit, little bit like with music after the the second world war where you I wanted to know. start I over don't but know the solution. but I well, it's a little bit primitive to say now I'm 85 years old uh, after me the synthlut <laughs> <laughs> no I, I have a lot of fear about my children and, and my grandchildren. Is that it's their problem. Still, each person in his head some so cellos of thinking. And uh, we should invite people to to use uh, the possibility to think, mm. to think in a uh, in a creative way, in a responsible way. And well, in Europe we have all those big philosophers. From from Descartes uh, until today, and and uh, the whole development of the human um, subject of, of the easy is is a sort of emancipation of thinking. But thinking also means to know that we don't know anything. <laughs> yeah, speaking of philosophy, <laughs> you are sometimes uh, you have referred to. Eastern uh, Kyoto, for example, Zen philosophers. Excuse me again, I didn't understand. Uh, speaking of philosophy, you you have referenced in, in the past to Kyoto philosophers, to the... Ah, yes. sure. Well, in the moment... What do you think? Uh, how well, it applies? Still, the, the, last, the last fossil is, was Mr. Ueda. We met each other and he wrote, and now he died, the last one. And... Uh, I don't know if this could, uh, this is a very easy solution. Uh, uh, they say um, we are waiting for the so-called nothing. Yeah. So do you think it's but still positive nothing? In the society and, and, um, and, the, and the monks, uh, uh, I don't know if uh, uh, in this film, they show because last year in, in, in October there was my opera in Zurich. And there uh, I also speak a little bit about the Zen Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, well, as you know, it's, I think it's, I, I also spoke when I was in Katowice about the same thing. Uh, yeah. The, the student asked the master how I can find the truth. And the master says, what? So on. <laughs> this great uh, somehow, yes? Uh, or, uh, and so on. Uh, the, I think it's a, it's a very, a very uh, intelligent way to react on the impossibility of human race to come to terms with these problems. Uh, they have no violence at all. And, uh, but now in the moment, I don't know what happens. I, I still am reading, sometimes very difficult to read also things. Uh, I think, well, Alexander, it's terrible. I'm so um, nihilist in this moment. <laughs> I say, the whole, my, also my life was always a prison. I grew up in a Protestant family. 
and I learned the ten, um, ten, ten gebotes, or no, the ten commandments, and I learned that there is a hell and there is paradise and all sorts of things. It is a self betraying. The whole, for me, the religion that are um, thinking about the death, and each religion has only sense because of coming in death, uh, is a sort of organizing our life in this earth. And um, sometimes there is, it's dominated by some uh, dogmas or something. Uh, I have all respect. My, my, my lead teacher, no, no, he was a, he was a, a Marxist. Mm -hmm. And he had no, he had, had no, uh, he was not a, a Christian, he was, he didn't, he said nothing. But he said to me when I was studying, uh, 1958, you must study all those religions. Each of the religions is because expecting to die, and in this situation to give more sense of our, to our life, and this is then dominated by some sort of power. So like the Catholic Church in Middle Age uh, there, and so on. Anyway, uh, I was in a, in, a, in, a, in a Protestant house, and there were eight children, and my father was totally theological and so. And my family, and that's a little bit too intimate, um, I have one brother, he was, he was not so talented like me. He's totally depressed now. He's still kaput from this uh, education. And have a sister the same. And all the female, they didn't, they, they, they were not allowed to study because a, a lady had to sit in the, church, in, in the kitchen no. the, and so on. So uh, they had, one became a Protestant nurse. And, she, and but she made something out of it. I, I had, and he's totally Protestant. Very, very. I have much respect. I shall not want to disturb her. It is her way to, to, to live, and she's now 90 years old. And she comes in each concert. Not only mine. It is wonderful. Anyway, and then uh, I, had, I was fortunate I came to Darmstadt. There was another life, and I came to Venice. This was also uh, in terms of moral, it was another life. <laughs> my, 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 um, how it's called? My hairdresser, he was gay. They said, yes, I'm gay. <laughs> and I like it. So, and my, my parents would be totally shocked. It was, it was uh, criminal to be gay. Hmm. So, so I, I, I learned another word of life when I was in Venice with a wonderful, uh, uh, talking and 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 see and so on and uh, so uh, and but my teacher was so hard with me with me the so-called surrealistic thinking. You know, or I, this is a very old uh, long playing this for my. <laughs> I, I, no, I wasn't it's... allowed to make any, any melody, and now I make my melodies. Or oh, I wasn't allowed to make a, a, a tonal harmony, and also he was totally brutal. And it, there was a moment when I said, "I, I shall go home and not to compose." And I said, "No, wait." But it 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 was for me um, a new freedom, and it became a prison. So I went out. I went to Cologne, to Stockhausen, and to uh, and to Cage, and so on. And then, uh, well, it's a little bit very personal now, I'm sorry, I can't want this, but then I had my, my so-called um, the concrete. No, it's very interesting. You, you I had to find out uh, a way to not be a epigone of Berio or Nono or Stockhausen or Boulez or whatever. And so I tried this with the energy, but this is a very old, uh, old rap <laughs> yes but you, you know i'm thinking now that it's a very interesting question today the question of of material and of freedom because the 20th century was was the the time of of pushing forward with a lot of different uh, new ideas like starting all over again with with uh, the the concept of music and of art in general 20th century 
20th century, yes. 20th century, yes. And, and now we are, I think, sometimes I feel like we are uh, stuck in this uh, situation in which there is no possibility of real continuation because you have so many different uh, lines started in the 20th century that you are unable to really, uh, like, for example, really find your master because uh, the, there are so many masters that you it, it's impossible to choose and to find this freedom that you are talking about. It's very interesting that I guess I, I'm assuming I, I can imagine that in the 50s when you found music concrete, it was liberating and it was uh, sure. yeah. total like freshness and and uh, so your generation and and, and you're uh, younger than you and older than you you were all pushing all these directions uh, in a total uh, free way but if i may say so now we uh, the, the i'm now 40 years old it's very difficult for me to uh, find one line to continue and also when i'm teaching uh, younger composers i have no idea how to approach this and the concept that you criticize uh, the concept of supermarket it seems like there's it's the only way that you can actually move around it's like going into the supermarket and trying to find some for yourself <laughs> yeah. so maybe it's what, what do you think about that how how do you feel do you do you feel responsible for that or 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 not no i think um, i think this is a not more real uh, realistic idea of progress to go on to always to make another material the the there is not more a white spot on the global of of material it's all you can make whatever when you can <laughs> it's not new it's, it's so body uh, it's, it's easy yeah but we should think about what is progress progress means not to find a new sounds of to find a progress is find to know a context and this you can study in the tradition the c major is in the well tempered piano of bach the first piece ave maria from <laughs> And it is same three three notes C E G in the uh, creation of Joseph Haydn, and it's the same in the um, in the fifth symphony of Beethoven, and it's the same in the Waldstein Sonate, and it's the same in the Schubert String Quintet, and it is the same in the Master Singers of Nuremberg. It's always the same notes, and they are totally new. Each time they are new, they are not the same because the context, they have another light to be put on it. And this is because, uh, as I said, always a prison. I, well, I have a friend with Wolfgang Riem, he always had a development. Mm -hmm. By and by, he finds to his more and more, and he, even his early pieces are as so strong as his late piece. But I had a time, and then I had to make a big uh, gap. And I, then I made serial music, and then I went to show at the big gap. I made it so uh, by, uh, by, uh, it's called uh, mobile forms, and then at the gap, and I made my um, um, music concrete instrumental. And when I made the first pieces of me, I think it was press, pressure, pression, mm -hmm. and this was them and this was air for, for orchestra and percussion. I thought I have a wonderful at my own garden. Nobody can uh, say this is a little bit like Boulez or a little bit like uh, Nuno or something. I was so happy. But after five years, it became a prison again. Uh, not only because there are a lot of other people doing the same, but I had to go. I had to find always the prison. Yeah. So, so what? What? What now? Because is your march fatal? Uh, <laughs> a, a way out of the prison again, or is it just? Uh, yes. What to, what to? What to? What would you say about that? Because it's a puzzle. Well, um, it was a little bit um, evil-mutig. <laughs> this was. Uh, I made it look. 
sometimes I say it's a it's a whore gets old, he gets religious. <laughs> but if the religious get old, she becomes a little bit <laughs> a little bit like a whore. Yes. <laughs> No, uh, I, I, even when I was studying in Venice, I clandestinely I had a I had a, a little band, and we made all the songs of of Sanremo, and we were and we had all the songs of Broadway melodies, mm -hmm. and I can play whatever you want as a bar pianist. Uh, I, I can whatever you want. Uh, I have to make uh, I make here for this. Why not? I don't know. I'm I'm all for it. No, because I'm asking. Leonard didn't know. He would have uh, sent me home. <laughs> no, uh, it, it is, and then. There was another thing, really, a little bit very personal now. This is not. Uh, I never studied instrumentation. You cannot study instrumentation by Luigi Nono. Mm. Impossible. <laughs> and now, when I uh, I made just also for fun this, I don't even know. I stole this melody. I don't know from from where. Uh, and nobody until today nobody protested, so I I must not say anything. But because all these people are protected seventy years, mm -hmm. and then um, I have a friend it was for piano alone for me like this. So well, uh, and then the, there was a friend of the opera in Stuttgart. He said we have four hundred twenty-five birthday. You should make an orchestra version. And then I was here sitting in my room. I had a score from Richard Strauss, a Kiptische Helena, <laughs> and I had the sixth symphony from Mahler. I had the eighth symphony from Shostakovich. I had uh, Maurice Ravel, which is so wonderful instrumentated. And the Shostakovich is so brutally instrumentated. And both is wonderful to hear. So uh, I had to study this. And so, this was for me a study about instrumentation. Mm -hmm. And now uh, my good, my good bad reputation, <laughs> my wonderful bad reputation is totally ruined because I think Mr. Lachman, uh, he <laughs> now there's an interview today. I had to answer if I now would write a tango. People are so stupid. Why should I take a tango? <sighs> But this is a problem of journalists. The problem is, for me, we should, in each, not only in the in the universities, in the music hochschulen, in the feuilleton, in, in the radio transmission, we should somehow, I don't know how, always a little bit think what means the idea of art. Art in a in a in not there is the art of cooking and there's also the art of don't know whatever to do. Uh, there is art of fighting or so, but this is a metier. Mm. Bach, had, Bach wrote Die Kunst der Fuge. This was because he was a, he had a perfect metier and he wanted to study this. But, um, and even Mozart, he was an entertainer and he wrote a piece for the aristocracy to, to make house music or, the, or to be in. So, and then he wrote his big symphonies and he wrote his big piano concertos. He wrote the last string quartets and his string trio and all in the quintets. And he was fired out from the archbishop. Yeah. Because he, he, he knew he was much more than just a, 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 a butler for Mr. Um, Hieronymus von Salzburg. And then he made his own. He, he made his own subscriptions, and nobody wanted to come. Only maybe a few persons. And I think the first who really understood art in the sense of autonomous thing, art just to remember people 
that we are creatures loaded with spirit. The, word, the, the Deutsche word Geist, it's not so easy to translate in another language. Spirit, if you make it in Italian, it's a more religious thing, uh, spirito. Kind of. yeah. And if I make it in French, esprit, it's a more of fun of, of being uh, so. But there is a, in, in Germany, I don't know, I don't know Polish language. It's, but the idea of spirit means logos, thinking, but a logos who, who knows his impossibilities, who is thinking about his branches. And logos is also full of empathy. Spirit is full of empathy, and each piece, if you, which um, remember you that you are, you have a, you, you are talented with spirit, and then you have a responsibility not to forget this. Uh, this is for me the only ju justification of making be an artist, because. Even my music now, it's a sort of entertainment. But ah, we shall a little bit listen to the, to the noises of Mr. Lachenmann. And after comes the second symphony of Brahms, and so they are a bit better. So this is, uh, but uh, in the moment, therefore, I always now insist when they make a, not only a piece of mine, but also with a piece of mine, the first performance must be performed twice. Hmm. The first time it is entertainment. It's interesting. It's a sort of uh, adventure with noises, or you are going in, in a so on. And it and it is all your piece is interesting. And this is a most terrible insulting me. If if you say to your wife, I love you, and she says this is interesting. <laughs> wow. It's finished. Yeah. <laughs> so but if they say to me, which happens very still today, what you are doing, it's not music. Then you're happy. This person I want to, to, convict, uh, to, to uh, convict, uh, I want to, with him to, uh, him to, to, to try with him what happens. But it is, it's not music, but what is it? It's a situation for your uh, perception, for your ears. In the ear are the endons on your head and your intelligence. And if you are really fortunate, it's the endons until your heart. So here, the, the question is today, how we come to terms with irritations. In a time of globalization, we have to meet a Muslim, we have to meet an Eskimo, we have to meet a lot of other people. We have a totally other idea of beauty. So and, and do you think- idea Of good taste and so on. So do you think that the material is absolutely irrelevant, that it's, no. it doesn't matter? Uh, the material is loaded with a lot of history and with possibilities. I today, still I make my uh, so-called um, music concrete. I don't, I don't write next piece in, in, F, in, in F sharp major or something. <laughs> this was one visit, let's see. But um, I think each sound, if you know, use it, if it be a noise or it be a um, D major or whatever, or a dominant, whatever, each of these sounds is like a point. And they're going so many lines through this point. It is a part of Baroque music, the D major, at the beginning of the of the Christmas oratorio, <laughs> and the same D major is a part of of Mozart's uh, piano sonata, or of his uh, one of his uh, piano concertos, and it is it is a part of a Brahms concerto, and it's a D major, uh, even in, in the music of of Debussy or of of our instant um, La Valls from Ravel. Mm -hmm. So. And then it's a, it's a lot of infinite lines. And you as a composer, you should find your line going through. And then you can you have no fear to make, to make whatever you want. Um, I, I said, no, I have no, I'm not teaching anymore. I said to my, to my friends or my, to my students, 
you should write what you want to hear. Like Schumberg to Cage. Uh, yeah, uh, somehow, because the question is when I say you. So I, I should say, I, I write what I want to hear. But who is I? Yeah, so who is Sometimes I? Sometimes people say to me, students, uh, I said, this is totally, uh, it's totally um, stupid here. I said, but I want it. But who is I? You are, you, you are not existing. You are only this, how it's called, the, the man on the eigenschaft. There was a famous writer in Austria. Um, ah. And he said, the, the subject is only a meeting of a lot of little uh, waters, mm. as I said before, where you are coming from and so on. And this, you are full with a lot of influences you don't even know yourself, but you are reacting. And so you must be very misconfident on your so-called I. This is why the, I think this is why Schoenberg, he gave, he take a third tone role. He gave the responsibility, or later in the serial, they gave the responsibility to an algorithm. Mm -hmm. Structure is a sort of super eye. And then the problem is also, you can make again a lot of designs with such things. You have so, to react what happens. So how do you, because it seems like uh, you see in some composers, uh, like being uh, not genuine. Uh, you are famous for criticizing. So, well, I, maybe not recently, but in the 80s, you've, you've, fi you've quarreled with, with Henze, with Penderecki, with you. you I should not so criticize. <laughs> but I should observe what happens. So you, you don't agree with yourself from that time? Oh, this is my problem. I shall not tell you. <laughs> But, okay. you know, uh, I need so much time to write a piece. Now, today there comes the invitation, there's a good uh, musicologue which shall now publish my the second part of my text, Uli Mosch in Zurich. And he, they wanted me to write a short composition for him. I cannot do this. I, I, I hate this to do. And I don't want, uh, so I'm not a machine and, and to take a jubilee, you write a jubilee or a, or whatever, um, or, or a death. I even for the death of Nono, I didn't write a music from Nono. Stupid. But there are people that are doing this. Or now, still more, uh, there's a German called he wrote a Corona symphony. Whoa! This is so stupid. But it, one thing is clear, you know, all the pieces of Morton Feldman. He has found his own garden. Mm. And this is a very rich one. So, and uh, Sharino. Yeah. A wonderful garden. And uh, the one. What about the younger ones? You, when you were in Katowice six years ago, you said Rebecca Saunders. Oh, this, oh I, I adore what he does. She's one of the best composer and the most uh, inspiring composers for other. She has a totally own idea of music and she's perfect as a metier, what she's doing. And uh, if you are, well, normally I don't say he's the best composer, which is stupid. I don't want to be the best composer. But there are composers which are not so much excited about. They shall do what they do and I respect them. But uh, I make a and there's also a composer I have much respect, this is Eno Poppe. Mm -hmm. They are all very sensitive to this problem. They are not making, they are not so easy uh, writing. They are really, to, each piece of them is an adventure. And if a piece is not an adventure, you only do what, you know my old stories. A composer who, who knows what he wants, he wants what he knows. Yes. Yeah. Not enough. <laughs> you must go uh, out. So he must, he must go in, in a thing where he is not so, and then he has, shall have an adventure and he shall be. It's like if you go, now sometimes I say composition is like to go on a mountain. 
if you go on a mountain, uh, you are above society. You are and you're all alone, and you and you find a lot of dangers and of cliffs where you can fall down, and you have a wonderful sight. And when you come back, you are another person as you were before. This is why for composing today. And if I think, I think by and by with Beethoven and later, Beethoven also, he made something totally primitive things, which Mozart never would have done. It's so primitive, yes? But it is, it is full of energy. And he found another way to use the same thing which everybody knows, uh, and so on. I think, as I said, you uh, write what you want to hear, but you must always think about your limits in which you are thinking. Do you, you must make experiments? Do you accept uh, fun now? Fun. A little bit, because it seems like you. Uh, well, you, you of course always criticize fun as being kind of barbarism and uh, the modern. Uh, but but it seems like you are maybe not not fun in a in a in a like a easy way. But going for some people, climbing mountains is is fun. They are excited. Yeah. So do you think? If you make this fun, they come in death danger. Well, maybe so. The the <laughs> the de deadly fun is okay to you. Yes, it is fun. I don't remember if they know if they call it fun. Uh, uh, how it's called? Um, we have a lot of such people who go on the Himalaya. It is fun, but it is it is a provocation as well for the body, a provocation for your will, of your energy, of your nerves, and you go on your limits of possibilities. Of, and you call can may call it fun, but. Uh, the other thing, if I, it's fun, is also to be just happy together. So, so and there are people in now, uh, they go to Bern in Switzer Switzerland. Bern is uh, the, the capital of yeah. Switzerland. And there is a, a, a there is a, at the river, there is a for a bungee jumping. So they pay 500. French, uh, uh, Schweizer, Franken, and they jump into the air and they fall down 200 meters and they arrive 10 centimeters before arriving on the floor. And then they feel better. Yes. <laughs> this is fun. It is a service to make fun or to make a uh, in, in, to go, go on, on, on the desert and with all the problems we may come, or there's, it's a big service of fun in this sense, of, of existential crisis. You can have fun with this if you want. Uh, but in the, so I say, in, in the concert hall, they are all sitting in the warm bathtub. They should make a little bungee jumping in the concert hall. <laughs> But I the protocol is a is a place where everybody knows what is what is beautiful and what is uh, disgusting, and and so on, and what is familiar. Uh, I think, but this is well, it's not more my problem. I say it's a, it's, it's a problem of of the feuilleton, the problem of all those people, and they do nothing. They only make again, and each critic is just an entertainment. It's only stupid. Mm -hmm. a country, but I think it's when there when there was um, how it's called the critic who made Bruckner. He was so against uh, Bruckner. There was a famous critic. He was a friend of Johannes Brahms, Hanslick. Yeah, it about Hanslick. He made a critic about Bruckner that Bruckner was totally destroyed about the Third Symphony. But before doing this, he played together with Clara Schumann on forehand at the piano part. This is the difference of our critics. They only write uh, books properly somehow. It was interesting <laughs> or something. 
and it, uh, it is bullshit for the, the most of them. I, I don't, in Germany, I don't know. It might be something, they are, some are more modest, and they know their limits, so they are somehow respectful. Yeah. But I, well, and now, Alexander, I must try to write still a little bit music. I cannot only, uh, now I'm uh, speaking with you. <laughs> And now I had the contact with the, with the journals. Yeah. There was the most famous critic of the Süddeutsche Zeitung in Munich, together with the Frankfurter Allgemeine, are the big journals in Germany. And he came in my concert with Corenzi, there was zwei Gefühle. The title is Musik mit Leonardo. Mm -hmm. And he wrote only about Michelangelo. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> I like to, I, I shall not criticize, I make my jokes about this. It is, yes, you are right, maybe not, it's not so big difference. You should not be so, so, so uh, uh, pedantic. Leonardo Michelangelo. So this is a, the level of the publishing is so, they only want to be interesting instead of amusing somehow, or to make a, like this, terrible shit, or, so yeah. they make a big hero about currencies in the moment, and they are others, others, and they are totally like this. But should, do you think composers, uh, by, by the way, could you show your face a little bit more because we are, uh, I'm now talking to your, could, if you could maybe lower your camera a little bit because I can see. Ah, oh, sorry, I, yes, I see only my ears. Yeah, yeah but it's, it's all fine, but maybe that's more interesting. <laughs> Uh, I cannot see myself. It's terrible. <laughs> so, do you no, think it's... composer should, especially young composer, do, do you think it's it's okay to try to get to people or not? Because it's, it to seems try like to what? try to what? Try to uh, uh, well make some publicity. Try to 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 care about their music to be heard uh, and and understood. I always did. I always did. I try to publish about uh, the different way of, of, of listening, about tonality. Now, I, I should publish something. Do you know what are the conceptualists? Yeah, I wanted to ask you, what do you think about this <laughs> uh, group? Well, uh, the, the, the most uh, loud Person is Mr. Kreidler, Johannes Kreidler. Yes. And he always makes my say his jokes about me. Nice jokes. So he said, Mr. Lachman always is writing crescendo. And there was in the 18th century the Mannheim crescendo. You know, uh, Stamitz and those. Yeah. And now we have a Stuttgart crescendo. <laughs> And so now I wrote a piece which is called Stuttgart Crescendo. It's a conceptual piece. Uh, it's like this, uh, you need, well, the, the lux luxury version is a, a big orchestra, 88 musicians for each key of the piano, uh, another instrument. So you need six piccolo flutes in the high, and you need at, at least six, uh, uh, Contrabass, tuba, and, 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 and double fagot, and each has only one note. And then comes the crescendo. For instance, all, all Catholic in the orchestra who cannot swim make a crescendo. Or all, uh, all, uh, a female which are vegetarian. And I, I promise you, in Katowice shall come another harmony out than in Stuttgart, or in, in Reykjavik or in Shanghai, it doesn't matter. <laughs> so I made only a list what you could be. You could be male or female, you could be um, well, no, uh, gay or ungay, or you could be uh, vegetarian or not vegetarian, you could be Christian or uh, you could be, you have a 
you you have a, an own your own house at home, or you are uh, uh, only uh, big, living with parents. It's a one is that it's a big list. What you could be, you are a friend of Trump or not a friend of Trump, and or for instance, you have a you have a calf here, or you have a a peruke, and all the all the Trump fans with peruke. It comes only three notes, but it's a good crescendo. <laughs> was it performed? Good cap crescendo. Was no, it yeah. was it performed ever? Sorry? Was it played? Did, did they perform it? They wanted to do it, and I didn't allow. Uh, it should come. Oh. It's in the bishop. They wanted to do it, be performed, and I didn't even dedicate to Mr. Kreidler because he made a piece in Stuttgart. It is called Bolero. And they, they only played the Bolero from Ravel without the melody. And he, said, and he got uh, 30, 30,000 um, 30, uh, euro, uh, euro. And he said, yes, I know uh, I made it in five minutes, but I thought about five years. Okay, so you, you, you don't like conceptualists. Oh, I try to understand. I understand they are tired of all those contemporary uh, manieres. They, they, they are tired of this. They don't, but they have no fantasy. And it is totally uh, elitaire. If, the, if, if my, my neighbor, who is a uh, a grocery, uh, he goes in a concert and he wanted to hear the bolero without the melody, he doesn't understand anything. It's totally elitaire. And then the, well, in, the, in Stuttgart they have now a, a composer and there was a um, concourse uh, competition, uh, competition about cello. And he had to play the, the obligatory piece which everybody had to play. And he had he only said each should bring his own favorite piece, but he should play it in five piano pianissimo. Great, huh? And so on. Or there's another piece, um, it's called Requiem, Danish composer. There is a man totally naked, you on the on the stage. Uh, li lying on a table, and there are four ladies sitting around, and they touch him, and the and the sounds he gives from his voice is the music. Well, so but isn't it uh, John Cage basically uh, taken to next level? No, but John Cage, uh, John Cage was a, a sort of befreiung, liberation of the sclerotic uh, structuralism. The surrealistic pieces, which also became a mannerism terrible. Uh, but the best composers of them, maybe it was Donatoni, he made beautiful pieces also. But the best serial pieces were uh, Nono in Canto Sospeso, or Gruppen von Stockhausen. Mm. It was, but in all those pieces, the serial beginning was they um, they created a situation which they could not prepare in their fantasy. It, it was the algorithm who made it, but then they didn't like it. this is only a design, and then they were reacting. If you look at the Gruppen von Stockhausen, there's a lot of situations which are when he makes a, a developing of what, what the serial algorithm was giving to him. So it was a sort of like a record who wanted to go about the, um, it's called about the earth in, in um, to overcome gravitation. Yes. So they are, they are in, in, a, in, a, in a little thing sitting uh, and they are not free, but they come something out and then they are free. They have, they have uh, overcome the gravitation. But then it falls down, this first element in which he's bringing them. I remember, I like the story, maybe 
I knew it already six years ago. I had a discussion with Wolfgang Riem, right? and I, I tried to defend the serialistic thinking because it, this is all boring and this is. Uh, so. And I said, if you want to go in the deep ocean, very deep, so 5,000 meters beneath, uh, you need to sit in so a, in so a, a capsule. Uh, yeah, like a capsule. Yeah, it made a, 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 a vestment very not comfortable. But with this, you can go down and you can see a landscape you never saw before. And I was so proud of my. And then he said, Wolfgang, yeah, yeah, I know. In Darmstadt, they are all sitting with their uh, um, going down, but there is no water. <laughs> and I said, you son of a bitch, you. One to zero for you. <laughs> this was right, yes. Sometimes, uh, but uh, this way, it's again the problem, the question, who is I? The I has not so big um, authority anymore. The I should find his limits and he should find his prison. And then he can react to the situation. Maybe well, now I'm so old, I say, maybe the whole life is a prison, and so we have to find out. <laughs> but this is terrible. I should not say like this. But for me, it was always, I, I went, I was to Stockhausen, and then I had to go on and so on. And now I write pieces like uh, my melodies. This, this piece was totally uh, interdicted when I was studying with Nono. And I always know it's terrible. I said to my uh, young composers, you have to kill your teacher. It's an old concept. You kill your teacher, and then you can love him much more than before. But you also have to kill your father, maybe. Yeah. I have to kill my father, really. And, and then I understand him better. And this is a little bit sadistic, but. And I know when Nono, I, Nuria, the widow of Nono, she told me. When I came to Venice, I was really depressed because he was, whatever I did was bourgeois. <laughs> bourgeois relics, all this, he said. And, and so, and Nuria, his wife, said there was a breakfast in the morning, and Nono came and he said, Today comes Helmut. Ortilo di Struco. Today I shall destroy him. <sighs> so I had to I had to fight. I had to fight. And then he always said two notes is uh, two notes for the same instrument. And the same uh, intensity. It's already already a melodic um, relict of bourgeois music. And at the end, I said, DJ, if you write only one note alone for a harp, it's already a bourgeois element. So uh, our teaching was a fight with, with, uh, with respect and with cruelty as well. <laughs> so, and I never did. I was much nicer to my students than he, he was to me. Uh, but I, uh, this situation is, it was helpful for me. I am so grateful to him, and he was he, he himself. Well, he was a totally left composer. Yeah, he was meeting Granikov in in Moscow, and he was well also Shostakovich. And the, so, and then when there was the wall in Berlin, I said, "Jesus is terrible. Your your ideology is terrible uh, to to." Prepare families and, and, to, and to shoot on people which cannot more support to live in this system. And he said, You are too sentimental. But you, then... German, you, German, you have killed the Jews. You, German, you have killed the communists. 
you German have devastated the whole Europe by a terrible war. And now we have two states. One state tries to learn with a lot of mistakes, and the other is already a part of the of the imperialistic uh, system in the, in the United States. It was his argument. <laughs> and then it's clear, uh, and then came, he, he was totally confused. He was so, he said to me, if you, be, if you would have the socialistic conscience, you never would be depressed. You never would be tired. But when he was, was older, I, didn't he uh, change his mind a little bit? A little bit is good. <laughs> yes. You know, look, in, the, in that time, there was 61 and so I had a big, I had my big uh, uh, conflict with in, in 71. And then we had 12 years not more speaking to each other. It was very good for me. And in that time came, um, how it's called, in Poland, um, Solidarność. Yeah, in the 80. This was Christian workers who were protesting. And then came his friend um, in Italy, uh, oh, it's called, uh, the, the boss of the Communist Party. Um, and they were friends. And he makes the so-called um, Compromesso Storico. Uh, socialism with a more human uh, way. And then came Gorbachev. Uh, um, you know, uh, came Gorbachev with Perestroika and so on. And he was, and then he tried to indoctrinate his, his daughters. And one of the daughters became, uh, uh, she made drugs, LSD and ecstasy, and she could not more live. And so he had a lot of problems to learn what he, what he caused by this uh, terrible, uh, he was so fanatic. And then um, he was, he was as, a, as a young man, he was in the resistance. He helped a lot of, of uh, partisans to, to, to be um, protected, to be hidden. Or he, he, he had a he had a little ship to bring them out of. Uh, so he was really not only a, a theoretic; he was really practical. And then now, I remember there was uh, in Russia there was the so-called Komponisten Verband with Renikov. Mm -hmm. You know who was Renikov? Yes. You know. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, Shostakovich, he called him the blood dog. Yeah. The dog yes. and, uh, and there were a lot of composers which were not part of the Union League because they were formalists. It was Schnittke, Ubaidulina, Denisov, Firsov, Firsova, Smirnov, and mm -hmm. they all were not part of the, they were not invited. They were formalists, enemy of the people. <laughs> oh. And then there was a festival in Venice, uh, and there were all those um, communist pa parties uh, were invited. And therefore, they came Renikov to, to Venice and Litvinov and all those old. Stalinist composers. And though the young Russian composers, they made a sort of anti-festival directly near to the house of Nono, at Dudeka, on the other side of Tatare. And they invited Nono to come to them. And he refused. And there was one Russian composer, I think Volkov, or the word Volkonsky, somehow, I don't know, remember. He wrote an uh, open letter in all languages. And I said, Gigi, I, when, when you were in Moscow, I took 7,000 miles from Siberia just to meet you for a moment. And you couldn't even come about the other part of the channel of Judeca to visit us. 
And the last, I have it in my book, it's, it's German, I'm sorry, but it was, he said, uh, the last say, did you, you don't love uh, the, the people? This was the most hard strike in, in the great human, human guy, you know, who was fighting for a new human world and so on. Yeah. So this was a very hard lecture for him. And Nono was totally touched by this. And then in the last, in last years, uh, he, was, he began to drink. And he had a lot of ladies in Berlin and everywhere. And he, um, and, and, and he became very sick. He had a so-called cirrhosis mm-hmm. with the liver. Yeah. He knew that he had a cirrhosis. And he had a, a lady in Berlin, a beautiful woman, woman, and they went together and they were drinking whiskey and so on and fucking and all so on. And um, I met him four weeks before he died. In, he came back to Judeca, uh, not Judeca, he came to Saturday where his parents had the house. And I met him and he said, uh, I have made an auto destruction. He said, and why do you that? You are crazy. Why should you should write your music and not make an auto destruction? He was totally depressed, but he didn't allow me to be when I was shooting with him. He was he made a sort of suiciding uh, by in rates by drinking whiskey, having a, a level cirrhosis, which you cannot be the most stupid thing. And so at the end, uh, well, I was at his funeral. It was very sad. Uh, they, were, they came all. They came Henze, they came Berio, they came all those composers and, and his friends and also his enemies came because you know, he was there. Uh, but, and uh, I have a lot of letters, our last letters. He was, so he began to, we had a, re- a reconciliation in 83, from 71 to 83, 12 years, no contact anymore. And then he came again to Freiburg in the electronic studio because to preparing his opera, uh, Prometeo. Mm-hmm. And uh, then um, there was a student in Freiburg from Klaus Huber, uh, Cornelius Schwer, and he ca- Clandestinely, he came in my class to Stuttgart, <laughs> and, and he said, uh, "You must come to Freiburg. There's Gigi waiting for you." But you can create. I said, "Not come. I don't want to be treated again as, as we did before." But if he wants to come in my house, Leonberg, he shall be welcome. The next day, came telephone, Elmo. In one hour, I shall be uh, in Leonberg. <laughs> he was totally excited. So I had I sent my wife uh, with our little girls out and make, make a little walking. I don't want you to be here. And then I was waiting before my house. It was so a little hired house. <laughs> I was sitting like an American farmer, so in the in the in the middle west. <laughs> And Gigi came and I said to him, just instead of greetings, you were not correct with me. And he said, Elmo, I was too strict. I said, okay. <laughs> and this was our, it was seven years and then after he died. And he, and then he, he knew all my pieces. He said, Westfunk had to send him my pieces. And then, before this, it was a friendship, but I was looking to him as a good master. So and your letters, way, your letters that are published, are from this last period. There are several. Uh, Alexander, you, you cannot speak e- any German word. No, sorry. <laughs> it is it's in German, and it is in Italy. Mm-hmm. There is now uh, published the, our letters from the beginning. Yeah, I know. I tried to try to buy them, but uh, yes, there is no English version. Uh, 
and then uh, because in the very first letter it was when I when I was in Darmstadt the first time in '57. The same year was in Donau Esching in his very strange piece, Variantis. And it was a scandal. People were all booing. I was the only one or one of the few who really was so enthusiastic about. And I, I did what I always say to my students. To, I was copying the whole score. So with my hand, I had to touch each note with the intensity, with all the things, the whole. So uh, I also made the same thing with the string crew from Schoenberg and with the Kammer concert from Berg and I made it with Kontrapunkte, but I made it with Varianti as well. And in that time, there was not so much easy to copy things. So I sent the original just for a nice greeting to Nono, a minute, and then he wrote me back, uh, can, you should come to me now. Uh, Venice is not so expensive as, as Mi Milan, Milan would be, because he hoped me to go to Moderna. And the first letter, when he refused to, to teach me, he wrote me, uh, I cannot teach you because I'm totally full with my own problems as a composer and what I have to do and so my family. But you should study all the music, the Netherlands composer and the um, musicalische opera, Sacrifice from Bach. You should study the Eroica. And then he wrote in German, uh, and he, he wrote in a very bad German. Schauen Sie, wie der Geist alles beherrscht. Look like spirit is dominating everything. And this phrase, studying the, our wonderful tradition, we have an incredible, uh, precious tradition, studying how spirit is uh, ruling, basically, ruling uh, in, this, in this music. This is what I say to my students. And this is the best way of, of uh, I have also another one, but it's because, you know, um, Alex, Chanda, I am an old uh, Darmstadt victim. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I am totally serial composer. And I tried also to make analysis. I did it also in Katowice. I made analysis of Beethoven. Yes, I remember. It's like a sort of different decrease of one element. So in the moment that a tremolo, which is a fast movement, can be developed into a totally, without any motion, a frozen tremolo, which is a tenuto. And uh, when I was studying in, uh, not more with Nono, I was studying in Cologne with Stockhausen, and there was another composer, Henri Pousseur. Mm -hmm. You should know him, yeah. He was a little bit pedantic, so. But he came once in the class and he said to me, we were sitting about, you know, 12 composers. And he said to me, you should tell me now a sound, whatever. Don't wait, immediately you should not hesitate, a sound which comes in your mind. Uh, and I said, okay, I, I looked a uh, Western in the evening before. So, um, High, high, high noon. This. So you know high noon? No. What was this? The video of, of the of the printup of, of Monte Carlo was Grace Kelly. Mm -hmm. And there was Gary Cooper. Yeah. Oh. Gary Cooper was a was a sheriff. Yeah, I, I, I High Noon is an incredible, wonderful film. You you should look. I don't remember the, uh, the title, but I know the film, yes. Ah, you should know. Da, 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 da. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember the horse, horse noises. <laughs> okay. And then he said, and then there's another composer who was maybe Makoto Shinohara or whatever. Now, which sound comes in your mind now? Immediately, don't wait. Say it to me. And the early said, uh, Traumerei von Schumann, beginning. 
Then he said, okay, now one hour totally silence in this room and each of you has to make a theory with different degrees, beginning from the Hof uh, and ending with the Träumerei von Schumann. So we were sitting one hour and each of us had to find uh, not, not a theory of durations or a theory of pitches or a theory of intensity, a theory from how to go by and by from <laughs> the horse noises to the Träumerei von Schumann. And the wonderful, because now the fantasy has not only to do his instincts or what comes in our stupid mind, but he has now to, he has a challenge. And each of, I think it have 12 composers, each of 12 composers had a totally different theory to make this. But he made only with, with the materialistic things, the acoustic elements, the, 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 the rhythm we can make, uh, I don't know, alteration, uh, what's called, yeah, uh, a modification of those ideas. Like, do, 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 do. <laughs> and, and each of us said, oh, this, this is a, uh, this is an animal of horse, and now he, yeah, he comes to the cows, and he comes to other animals, to birds, and all. <laughs> anyway, this was for me so important to take a sound as a, as, a, as a part of uh, a context. Mm. And then I have no problems to use a C major anymore. In my context, it's not the same like in the Master Singer of Nuremberg von Wagner or, or so. Uh, this is uh, in that situation now, I wrote a piece like my melodies, for instance. Yes. Normally, I hate English titles. It is a it is a mania always, but this was not. Uh, it was Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. <laughs> so I made my melodies. So uh, in this way, so I had a little bit to reconciliate whatever things I was asked to um, avoid. Yeah. And so, therefore, the sort of material, as I as you asked at the beginning, it's, it's a question of to find your own context. And then you have no problems. You must not be, oh, I must avoid to be a little bit like, like, a, um, I don't know, like Charino or like Berio or like whatever, or, or like uh, Alexander Kneifel or like Kuba Dulina or things like you, you are making your own music. And maybe there's something similar or so, it's no problem. Uh, the, Google, the pieces of Mahler are full of material he used, he didn't even compose, he just used it. Yes. And the Bolero von Ravel, he only used, he didn't, the only thing which in the Bolero is really composed is the crescendo of the instrumentation. I don't think he always, I think uh, in the moment when the composer has no confidence in musical language. He cannot say what he wants to say. It's too, so he take a mask. So, so if you're, for instance, uh, sorry, I, I made this stupid example. If you say uh, to your girl or to your friend, I love you. Uh, this is, or he says, uh, this is from Franz Lehar, from the operator, uh, Landes Lessons. <laughs> so this is, I know this, I love you, I know, I, I, I heard it live in, in, in an operette, it was also sung with the same thing. So you cannot say, I love you, you must, what, what can I say that they shall understand better? She, he could say, I hate you. Then she gets maybe a little bit nervous now, oh, what is, pro what, what is this problem? <laughs> we shall um, avoid to speak to her anymore. It's very easy, not so easy. And at the end, she says, shit, I say, I love you. Or oh, you understand or not? <laughs> because if, if, you, if you understand the context, you make the most vulgar or primitive elements and they get a new uh, significance about the situation in which you are doing it. 
Yes, I agree but totally. I to learn, uh, and, and this was a no, no himself. He had to learn, and uh, so I have not more this neurosis uh, to be authentic and not to be um, confrontable with this composer or this composer. But you should do what what you do. This is you, and then uh, you must support yourself. <laughs> <laughs> This is very, yeah. You, oh, I don't, I don't want to take any more of your time. But this is very, I, I'm really happy. I have to do something. I'm a night bird. I yeah. go to bed earlier than uh, seven o'clock in the morning. Oh, and then I see. The book, and so before it's... going to sleep, I look the night trump. <laughs> wow. So well, so have a good morning then, uh, and <laughs> yes, and you have a good night. Oh well, it was great to be with you, and I once we were all together with your family, with your wife, and and uh, you are all okay now. I hope. Yes, yes, thank you. We are all fine, and.